Good morning, afternoon, and evening, people of YouTube. This is Draco Argentum welcoming you back to episode 4 of my 5-Minute Diatribes. In the prior episodes of this series, we introduced the social justice philosophy, nerds, the economic and social appeal of the nerd, and the attempt of social justice to seduce the nerds into accepting their ideology. Nerds started out hopefully optimistic, but once social justice began to work its changes on nerd culture, hopeful optimism soured into uncertain anxiety and further sank into dread. Nerds began to push back, and the social justice activists couldn't stand it. So here follows today's five-minute diatribe. The Social Justice Phenomenon in Nerd Culture, also known as The Lost Tribe of Woke, Part 4. Star Wars fans had voiced skepticism over Disney Lucasfilm's choice to decanonize the expanded universe, but most ran headlong into theaters to devour Episode 7, The Force Awakens. After ten years without a major Star Wars film, Fans and consumers alike pushed The Force Awakens to break box office records. The majority of consumers had nothing but praise for the movie. Many fans expressed concern about character, plot, and storyline elements that were not exactly consistent with prior releases, but they expected an explanation in the sequel. Other fans, however, were enraged by what they saw as a portrayal of one of their favorite characters, Han Solo. Disney moved forward with their first Star Wars story, Rogue One, which chronologically took place immediately before A New Hope and was received by many fans favorably as a return towards classic Star Wars. At the same time, CBS had released Star Trek Discovery exclusively on their streaming service. The show, set ten years prior chronologically to the original television show, drew in fans of the original material who found a very different property awaiting them. Fans critical of the show pointed out plot and character elements that stood in direct conflict with established Star Trek canon. The main character, Michael Burnham, was often described as a Mary Sue, an infallible character who always has the solution or the moral high ground in whatever situation they find themselves in. Critics complained of lazy writing and flat, uninteresting characters. In further departure from prior series, Star Trek Discovery was the first to drop the F-bomb and has since prided itself on its progressive values, which many fans complained came at the expense of good writing. Fan theories exploded all over YouTube and other social media platforms as Episode 8, The Last Jedi Neared, release. Some fans, angered by The Force Awakens, boycotted the film, while others eagerly flocked to the theater to get closure for their unanswered questions and theories. Instead, the fans were subjected to a series of unfortunate, subverted expectations. After a huge opening weekend, The Last Jedi ticket sales plummeted. Fans lashed out with complaints of shoddy writing, terrible character choices, and a betrayal of Luke Skywalker and his legacy. Many critics complained that the story was a hasty assemblage of connect the dots, moving from one social justice message to another. Fan backlash was still strong seven months later, when the second Star Wars story, Solo, hit theaters. While regarded as fair, Solo by Ron Howard became the first Star Wars movie to bomb at the box office. Social justice activists were shocked by the negative response from the fandom. They had underestimated the loyalty to these properties and the resentment that would come about through their damage. Marketing campaigns for these properties had utilized gratuitous amounts of nostalgia, and it was being proven for the double-edged sword it is. Nostalgia draws in fans of the original properties, which can be attractive for businesses who see a lucrative immediate ticket sale boost. But fans drawn in by nostalgia are given the expectation that the new material will be comparable and consistent with the original. If performed correctly, like in the case of the YouTube series Cobra Kai, nostalgia can reap incredible gains for the franchise. If, like in the case of The Last Jedi, Nostalgia is carried out with the grace and finesse of a grain thrasher. 
you will only reap shares of fan backlash. Social justice activists had no reasonable answer to this fan backlash. Hailed as the most progressive, the most inclusive Star Wars and Star Trek to date, the social justice mouthpieces declared that they had achieved the highest moral ground possible. Kind of like claiming Mount Everest for themselves. Anyone who challenged them or the franchises that they had hijacked were deemed in their eyes as immoral. Merely questioning the narrative was considered proof of one's immorality. People of all races and sexes who complained about character, plot, and storyline were accused of being racist, sexists, and bigots. Resistance to the social justice subversion of these franchises itself was labeled as toxic. Any attempt to defend oneself was taken as further proof of your toxicity. The mainstream media, long since infiltrated by the social justice agenda, promoted the message that any resistance was toxic. Resistance was futile. And that was conclusion of your five-minute diatribe for the day. I am hoping episode five will be the finale of the series. Uh, after that, I will be creating the super cut for your ease of viewing. Just remember, I'm an average nerd. If you have any of your questions, please comment on my videos or message me on Twitter. Uh, please just keep the conversation open. You can expect my next five di minute diatribe tomorrow with the finale of the social justice phenomenon in nerd culture, also known as the Lost Tribe of Woke. Please like and subscribe. Hit that Twitter. And until next time, take care.